Good afternoon. Uh, thanks for coming to uh, Jerome Cardi's and my talk this afternoon on Built for BlackBerry and how to go from rejected to approved. Uh, I know it's the end of the conference and everybody's probably wanting to be sitting by a pool somewhere with a drink, so <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully we can entertain you and, and give you some interesting information over the next hour or so. Okay, so what I'm going to do here today is I'm going to give you a brief overview of the program. I'm going to talk about the benefits, a little bit about the history, um, and then we're going to move into having um, a case study. So the case study will be on the application called Trapeze that is developed by Jerome Carty uh, from Kasai, the very talented Jerome Carty. Um, and then he's going to come up and he's going to talk about what he was thinking when he was building his app. Um, and then why he wanted to apply for built for BlackBerry, why his first version was rejected, and how it went to, to approved. And then I'm going to share some resource links with you uh, and some helpful tips and tricks. And at the very end, we'll open it up for questions and answers. So it was, it was a year ago, actually almost a year ago, at, well, it was a year ago at this event, that we announced the Built for BlackBerry program along with the 10K developer commitment, which is now closed. Um, and for those of you who don't know what the 10K developer commitment is, um, it was a commitment that BlackBerry put out that if your application passes a certain set of criteria uh, and it makes $1,000 in its first year for sale, that we will guarantee that it makes $10,000. And if it doesn't make the $10,000, we will pay you the difference. So again, that, that is closed. Um, but then what came of that is we needed to come up with some sort of criteria um, to vet these applications against. So that was kind of the birth of the Built for BlackBerry program. Um, you know, along the way, we listened to a lot of feedback from everybody. Um, we changed some things in the program. We changed some criteria. Um, and most recently in March, we launched the appeals process. So if people are familiar with um, the appeals, if people aren't familiar with the appeals process, basically what that means is that you've got three, three chances at a submission. So if your application submits, gets denied, and there's some tweaks that you need to do, uh, then you'd resubmit. If you're going to appeal, when you would want to use that is when you think your application is an absolute, absolutely the top form and you think that it should pass. So you can go and you can apply for the appeals process and it will be re-reviewed by a panel of app experts. So moving into the criteria, the things that we're looking for here, um, there's five basic, uh, five basic areas that we look at. Uh, one is user benefits, two is user experience, performance, service integration, and security. Games is a little bit of a different animal, and we'll talk about that a little bit at the, uh, at the end of the rest of the criteria. But basically, user benefits is um, we're looking for applications that provide the BlackBerry 10 experience. So you can have a really, really great application on the BlackBerry platform, um, and you can, you can sell it in um, sorry, BlackBerry World, uh, and be completely successful. Um, but if you want to be part of the Built for BlackBerry program, you need to incorporate the BlackBerry 10 experience. And a lot of this is done through uh, or um, outlined in the BlackBerry 10 user interface guidelines. So um, user benefits, uh, we're asking that the application provides um, good entertainment value uh, and or enhanced productivity and, incre and or increased communications. So we're trying to we're trying to have really engaging BlackBerry 10 experiences. So these are applications that are very rich in using um, the BlackBerry 10 experience uh, and, not just, and not just simple applications such as, and, and no offense to anybody out here who develops a flashlight app, but we're looking for something just a little bit more involved. The next up is the user experience. So what we're looking for in user experience is we want you to build for the form factor. So that means we want you to use the full real estate of the screen. We don't want any black bars on the outside of your application. Um, 
so we want you to use the full, the full experience of the screen. We also want the application to, we want it to flow. We want it to have application menus that are consistent with the BlackBerry 10 experience. So we don't want the user thinking about what they need to do next. It should just be intuitive. You want to predict your user's next actions. Um, you want to be able to, you basically want to be able to uh, delight your user. So a little bit later on when we talk about Jerome's app, we'll see how Jerome decided he was going to delight his user and then how uh, things were switched around after he, he looked at the BlackBerry 10 user guidelines. Um, something else that we're looking for in user, experience, in user experience is progress indicators or activity indicators. So if it takes a while for your application to do something, let your end user know. So throw up, <clears throat> throw up a, a progress indicator or, you know, maybe if you're downloading something, you throw up the download bar that shows the progress of where it's at. Performance. So we want your applications to be snappy. We want them to be responsive as much as possible. We want them to be good citizens and using the CPU and the memory. Just kind of, uh, there's nothing, there's nothing in, with, uh, it's, it's not very hard. It's just that your application needs to be, it needs to be snappy. We've also got service integration. So we require your application, with the exception of games, has a service integration. So you can use, use any one of the BlackBerry service, uh, uh, service services, yes. Uh, so payments, advertising, uh, you can also use our inv invocation framework, you can use NFC, you can use BBM, any of that. And then lastly, we look at security as well. Security is pretty easy as well. Um, we ask that you provide uh, a privacy policy in your vendor portal to your users to let you know what you're, you're doing with their data and how your application is using their data. Um, it would be preferable if you could actually put this in your application, but that's not an actual requirement. We also don't want you doing things like passing clear text passwords, so just kind of common, nice things to do for your users. So for games, uh, we realized when we were building out the criteria for this that if we try and force the BlackBerry, uh, the BlackBerry 10 UI onto games, it might not make sense because if you're in a game, you want the full experience of the screen. You want to be able to let your user interact. You don't want that big action bar at the bottom. Um, so we remove the, the, user, the user experience, some of the user experience portion uh, from the games. Um, but what we do have that is kind of special and not applicable to apps is that if you are launched on another platform, so if you are on Google Play or, um, or on iTunes, uh, you would want to, or we would take a look at what your star rating is. So we require you to have at least four to five stars uh, on a competing platform. And then, of course, we're asking you to build on one of our platforms. So we're asking you to build a web app using uh, our WebWorks, uh, or you could use Cascades. You could also use Native, or you could also use Air. The one that is missing here is Android, and we just found that Android didn't quite deliver that BlackBerry 10 experience that we were looking for. So we want you to use one of these, um, one of these languages to develop your application if you're going for Build for BlackBerry. Some of the benefits of the program, right now I don't know if anybody's visited App World while they've been here, but we've got the Built for BlackBerry micro banner up, um, right there. Um, it is appearing semi-regularly, so we have about 20, 25 apps that will get cycled through. There'll be new apps every time that comes up. Um, so that has helped with the discoverability of a lot of applications. Something else that we're doing, I don't know if anybody has uh, visited the Jam Space, but we've got our Built for BlackBerry booth there. And we've got about 30 applications on the wall that you can go up and you can um, NFC tap it and you can download the application from there. So we use your applications in our shows too. We may use them in keynotes um, or other sort of booths. If we go to GDC, we would have uh, only Built for BlackBerry apps in the GDC booth. So we realized that we needed to provide 
more value in, in benefits in the program. So a few things that we've started to work out here, uh, just launching this week, is that we've got the BlackBerry Rewards. If you have a Built for BlackBerry app, you can go in and redeem that for 1,000 points. Um, and then you can exchange that for swag or a bunch of other things in the rewards program. And something that Alec touched on uh, the other day in the keynote is that we're going to be adding some more discoverability into BlackBerry World. So maybe what I can do is, can we put the uh, HDMI out? Perfect. Okay, so one of the things we're doing is we're looking at having we're looking at having regional top lists. So if you see these here, you've got recommended and you've got something like top grossing. We would look to have or we're looking to have a built for Blackberry section here. So that when users first come in, they'll see uh, the built for Blackberry apps. Now just because you're in the Built for BlackBerry section doesn't mean you can't be in one of these other sections like top grossing or top download, top paid, whatever ends up being there. So you could end up being in two of them. The second thing we're looking to do is we're looking to incorporate... Wait for this to load. We're looking to incorporate uh, some sort of Built for BlackBerry identifier on, on a search. So you would have some sort of built for BlackBerry identifier here. So this wouldn't mean that you would have to actually paint your logo or your, um, your icon with the built for BlackBerry peel there. Um, and then once you go into the application, we would also have some sort of uh, point in here where you could go in and uh, you could see that it was a built, for uh, a built for BlackBerry app. Uh, this is a... Let me just put BlackBerry Live in here. And then lastly, the last thing we're looking to do to increase or help increase discoverability of built for BlackBerry apps is you see these headers here where it says apps and games. You got apps, you've got games, you've got albums. We're going to have a built for BlackBerry section there. Okay, excellent. So those are the things we're looking at doing in, in BlackBerry World to increase discoverability. All right, so next up what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a case study on Trapeze and how it went from not meeting the built for BlackBerry criteria to getting approved. Um, I'm going to invite Jerome back up here uh, from Kasai Labs. He'll introduce himself, uh, talk about why he wanted to be in the Built for BlackBerry program. Um, and, uh, yeah, I guess I'll pass it over to you. All right. So as Nancy said, my name is Jerome Cardi. Uh, I am from Kisai Labs, president. And I've done applications such as Black for BlackBerry 10 and Playbook and now Trapeze. So I'm going to just touch on a little bit of what version one looked like before, you know, it was denied. And I guess what I did to improve it and the feedback that was given back to me to kind of get it into a bill for BlackBerry. But, uh, let's see. So Trapeze is a Tumblr client for BlackBerry 10 right now, I'm working on getting it on Playbook. It allows you to post photos, text, and more. View your following, and now your followers. Search by tags, read blog, and like posts. So if you're an avid Tumblr user, this is the sort of app that you'd want to use. So um, the main reason that I actually chose to apply to be certified for built, built for BlackBerry with Trapeze is to give it that brand recognition, that kind of stamp of approval from BlackBerry, stating that my app is, you know, approved by BlackBerry and users can trust in them giving me this, the stamp of approval. So the other incentive, of course, was the 10K commitment that they pushed out there last year, but that's just an added bonus on top of uh, the brand recognition. So another good reason Nancy just touched on, uh, they're going to be a lot adding search criteria and uh, other little indicators that let you know that 
the app is built for BlackBerry, that lets the app stand out in the crowd and lets everyone else know that, you know, you can download this app, trust this app, and you'll most likely like this app or even love it. So, so in my first version of Trapeze, I kind of modeled it a little bit like the Facebook application. So the screen to the left kind of shows off where I had the tabs at first. They were way too far up to the top. So you know, most of you guys have Z10s and the screen's a bit tall. So using your thumb to get all the way up to the top wasn't the best place to, to put that uh, tab menu. So I actually uh, took it and moved it to the middle. So that made it a bit better but it still wasn't, it still didn't have the BlackBerry 10 look and feel. And um, there were a couple of other little issues with fonts and, and things of that nature, but that was the main thing that kind of stood out as to why it may or may not have passed uh, built for BlackBerry. So you see the same thing up here, the, the compose button is all the way at the top. Um, the slider, which opens up the tabs on the side, is also at the top as well. And the Compose comes out from the top, and it gives you which option you'd like to use, text, photo, quote, link, or chat. But it's still too far up um, for the user to reach it. So, and it, it doesn't really look like a BlackBerry 10 app. So. Same thing here. I think we had a few issues with it. Um, the account section actually gives you the title, but there were some screens that didn't. But we're going to touch on that a little bit more in a bit. Uh, but yeah, as you guys can see, it's full screen, no tabs, things like, things like that. So, But I, like I said, I actually modeled this off of the, uh, the Facebook application. and. Um, it kind of has more of a the other fruit application as opposed to BlackBerry. So, all right, hand it over to Nancy. Thank you. Okay, so to go a little bit deeper into why Jerome uh, first didn't meet the Bill for BlackBerry criteria, as he said, he's got the. He's got the, uh, the application menu up here at the top. You needed to press it in order to get your, uh, your tags, your, dash, uh, your dashboard tags and settings to come up. Um, this, is not, this is not how the BlackBerry 10 user guidelines or the, uh, the UI guidelines tell you to do this. So if you want your application to look, like a, look and feel like a BlackBerry 10 app and to pass the built for BlackBerry, um, to get your built for BlackBerry status, what we suggest is that you have an action bar um, on the bottom, and we'll show you what that looks like in just a little bit. Um, you have an action bar at the bottom that shows the most common actions that a user would use, and you've got your less frequent actions in the overflow or the a in, in the action menu. So it doesn't look and feel like a BlackBerry 10 app right now. Uh, as Jerome pointed out a little bit earlier, the, the Compose button is up, up in the top right-hand corner. Again, doesn't feel, look and feel like that BlackBerry 10 experience. So again, this would probably be one of your, if it's not a primary, it might be a secondary, um, a secondary action that your user would like to perform. So you would want to have that again in your action bar or in your overflow menu. And then there was some usability things that, that came up. Um, unfortunately, we, couldn't have, we can't demo the original version, uh, but you're going to have to take my word on this. Uh, I went in and I had two likes uh, uh, in, my, uh, in my Tumblr account, but when I went into the account screen and I went into likes, it showed me that I had no likes. So you're not delighting your user when you do that. You've got to tell them what's going on. You've got to have a consistent... Um, a consistently good app that, um, you know, what, what, let it use them, let the user come to expect a good quality um, experience. 
Um, and then the other thing was when I went into following, uh, it took me into the screen here with the lovely bumblebee, um, the lovely bumblebee symbol, which I'm a Transformers fan if you haven't figured that out yet. Uh, anyway, uh, it didn't tell me where I was. So if I look at this, it looks like I'm in the account menu. And to get to the, to get to the following, I actually did go through account, but once I'm in account, it should have told me that I was in my following section. So that was something that was flagged. Then if you went into the tags and you did a search, I know it's kind of hard to see here, but um, can everybody see how the red bar kind of extends beyond the white space? Everybody see that? Everybody awake? Yeah, OK. Good to go. OK, so that's not a great user experience either. Um, so I know Jerome went through and, and fixed a bunch of this, and we'll, we'll have a chance to see what that looks like. Um, but just to kind of share some of the most common mistakes that I see, uh, and, and they're really easy, but common mistakes is bug function, the um, broken functionality, so bugs. So, you know, I really suggest that you go through, you test your application really, really well, give it to somebody else, test the application, maybe send it out to some beta users, um, before you apply for the Built for BlackBerry program. More testing is always better, more testing. Uh, something else that I see quite common is the application menu. So you're either, you either don't have the right things in the application menu or you're, maybe you don't have an application menu at all. I'm not saying that you do need one, but if you do have things like settings, help, or information per the UI guidelines, you should have this in your application menu. So your application menu is when you, when you swipe down when you're in the application. So, you know, we've got some guidelines about where things need to be. Um, you really need to be, you just really need to be aware of, of where things are. So you shouldn't have something like help um, or settings in your, in your action bar or your, your action menu. And then the last thing that I see quite commonly is the flow of the application. I can often get into places I can't get out of. I get confused as a user. Um, you know, when I was showing you Jerome's, uh, when we were in the, the accounts menu and I wanted to go into following, um, it did, that didn't, it just didn't make sense. So, um, you know, really kind of pay attention to the flow of your application. Again, try and predict what your user is going to do, what their most common actions are. Um, and, uh, yeah, so again, I would suggest everybody do some usability testing, you know, Simple stuff. I don't want to insult anyone, but um, you know, take it, take your application, give it to somebody you've never met before, and say, "Hey, use this. What would you do?" And and watch them, and let them struggle with it. And if they're struggling with it, the rest of your user base is going to struggle with it. So it's free. Do it. Okay. So next up, I think we're actually going to do a live demo of some of the changes that Jerome made. So I'll give back to you. All right, if we could uh, switch over to the device. Thanks. So I kind of took the opportunity now to go through the, the application and kind of make a few changes that would make it feel more like a BlackBerry app. So I don't know if you guys can see it, but the very first thing that I did is I added a, an active frame, which wasn't in version one. Um, as you get into the app, uh, I've kind of flattened out a couple of things. There were rounded corners, which also slowed down the performance of the app a little bit. So by making that subtle change, I ended up making the app quite a bit faster. So it's actually smooth to, to scroll through. Sorry, I think it's a little early. All right. I'm clicking on everything right now, sorry. All right, so I'm on Nancy's dashboard right now. Um, it's a little cut off, but you can see I've added the action bar on the bottom. Uh, like Nancy said, for common elements, like the dashboard or your tags, which you would normally search for, you can actually, uh, I actually moved those to be the only two things in the action bar, and then I added everything else 
into the overflow on the side. So Compose now comes up in the overflow, and you also have the opportunity to, to reload your feed. It pulls up the same menu, but now you have uh, closer access to it with regards to your thumb. So it makes it a little bit easier to reach now. Another thing I did was I added a BBM invite to download, so you can actually share it with friends now. So that's one of the services that you can actually integrate with. I also did accounts. So Nancy, I guess, is just getting started, so not too many. But uh, her issue with the likes, which she said she had two likes fixed. Um, I don't know if I can go into it or not. But. Yeah, go ahead. I think it's appropriate. <laughs> so you have the activity indicator coming in there. The photos should load up. And uh, yeah, it's moving around pretty fast. So it actually, you, now I'm using more navigation, BB10 navigation. So you have the back button, uh, title bars to show where you are. So it's showing at the top that she's in her likes, as opposed to uh, where I had it before. You didn't even know where you were in the application. So now it's a little bit more obvious that you're in your likes. Now you're back at your account. And those were a couple of the changes that I made. Um, I think another one of the big ones was, uh, let's see if I can get it, if this works smoothly. Share. She has the old version on here, so. So, no problem. Load up the new version. So I just shared a link from the browser straight into Trapeze uh, so that I'm using the invocation framework to actually share content from one app to, uh, to my app. So I, I'm exposing my application as something that any application can share to. So that's, as, as you guys should know, very valuable in terms of your application being useful and valuable to the user itself. So. Um, Sharing to Facebook and, and, and Twitter were a couple of other things that I've kind of tweaked a bit. Added the dark theme as opposed to having a gray, light gray bar in the old version. So it kind of matches more of the BB10 UI. Another thing I did was I added a, the ability to post to other blogs, which is another thing. So I'm giving more value to the user and providing things that they ask for and still sticking with the BlackBerry 10 UI, so. And as you guys can see, I'm going in and out of screens, and you know where you are. Um, things are moving pretty quickly, and I'm actually going to, oh, wait, this is your account. <laughs> I was about to post chat fees on it. Um, but yeah, so everything is more fluid now than it was before. Before, you would run into a bug here and there but now it's actually moving as it should, so. Oh, the last one was uh, tags. So tags has the activity indicator in there now to let you know things are loading. Um, the red box that she pointed out earlier is nice and, and fixed, so that's pretty much it. We can actually go back to the slides. Okay, uh, so the live demo, uh, I, I just threw in some screenshots of Jerome's new version here. Uh, this is for download purposes later, so um, I'm just gonna skip through those since you've already seen them, we've already talked about them. Uh, one of the impressive things about Jerome's application is that it's actually a web, it's a WebWorks application. It's built using uh, HTML5. Uh, so, what we kind of what we kind of figured out when we started building out our criteria is that if you use Cascades, you get a lot of your UI for free, but it's very difficult for the other platforms for Air, um, for Web, and uh, you know we realized this. So what we're doing is we're trying to build up a library of samples that you can go out and use. So if you use these samples. I mean, we're not guaranteeing anything here today, but I mean, these are good examples of, of UI that you can use that should help you through the program. Because a lot of people were going out and they were creating their own UI, 
Um, everybody was doing their own thing, and that's great. And Jerome did that, and it worked for him. Um, I'm sure it took you um, a long time yeah. to figure that out. So <laughs> what we've done, what we've done is we've created we've created some samples for you um, in in these areas. So we've got BBUIJS. You can go to uh, I believe it's actually on the GitHub. But what I've done here is I've linked out to our our blog post of launching it. We've also got jQuery and Air. Those just launched yesterday, um, hot off the press. Uh, jQuery came from Jonathan Scott, and Air came from our very own Julian Dulles. Um, and then, of course, we're still working on the Sentry in Cordova, but but those are coming. Okay, so feel free to you know go out, look at these links, uh, go to the GitHub, take a look, and uh, use as you will. I'm not going to take very much time on this, but I did want to mention uh, there is one more application um, that did a really good job of documenting uh, not meeting the built for BlackBerry criteria and moving into an approved status, and that was Clipman. Now, this was developed by Michael Moot. He's out of Germany. It was, um, it was a very simple uh, uh, clipboard manager application. Um, he first didn't meet the criteria. Um, and then he went in and he made a bunch of changes to it, um, and he made it a lot more useful for the end user. It was, very, it was a very productive app. Um, I, I encourage you to go out and take a look at it and actually go out to his blog post. He did an excellent job of doing before and after screenshots um, and explaining exactly what he did. It's, it's, it's actually phenomenal, but uh, I highly recommend that you go and check this out. And the last thing I'm going to leave you with before we open up for questions and answers is a link to the BlackBerry 10 UI guidelines. Go out and read them. I was talking to Peter Hansen uh, just yesterday, um, and we were talking about the UI guidelines. He's one of our elites. And he's like, yeah, you know, I go out, I read it, and then I go back and I read it again, and then I need to go back three months later and I need to read it again. So go out, read it, become familiar with it, Make it your best friend. Um, there's lots of great stuff in there. Um, I've, I've outlined a couple of sections that I would really encourage everybody to focus on, which is the screen structure, the menus, uh, the progress and activity indicators, the screen sizes, and the portrait and landscape sections. So go check them out. I highly recommend them. OK. I think everybody's going to have a lot of questions. Maybe not. Might be wrong. What I would ask, one favor, is if you have specific questions about your application and perhaps why it didn't make the, the cut for the criteria, uh, that you maybe come up and talk to me afterwards or visit our built for Black, uh, yes, our built for BlackBerry booth in the Jam space, um, and we can try and help you out. So just hold on to those if if you have questions. But um, is there any other questions about the program or about the session that anybody would like to ask? <laughs> uh, no questions? Oh, yes, sorry. Yes, hello, Leon from New York, uh, the US, New York. I just had one question. If you qualify for a bill for BlackBerry and then update the app to another version, do you have to requalify for it again? Uh, we do put it through somewhat of a light testing. So you will get, if you go through, you get approved, you can make changes, that's okay. Um, you know, we, we do keep an eye on it. It doesn't go through the same rigorous, rigorous testing it does the first time. We just keep an eye on it. I just want to be sure I understood here. So you can submit things to BlackBerry World that are not built for BlackBerry approved, but then you have this extra bonus on top or this extra credential on top built for BlackBerry. Yes, yes, that is correct. So. Just to kind of back this up a little bit, in order to apply for Built for BlackBerry, your app needs to be in a BlackBerry world state of approved or up for sale. So you can absolutely be in BlackBerry world. Uh, you can go, you can make money. If you want to be part of this program, this Built for BlackBerry program, you go through an extra set of criteria that I just talked about here. So yes, I think there's a fellow in the back there. Hi. 
Hi. I believe uh, this program is uh, quite an excellent idea for advertising your app. And I believe almost all developers uh, would want to be there. How will you, uh, how will you manage the bunch of applications, the lots of applications that you will receive to avoid that uh, in certain time, the uh, build for BlackBerry had a lot of, of, of apps, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, I think so. So once, when there's like a whole bunch of apps, what, uh, sorry, maybe I don't understand. When there's a whole bunch of apps, yes, uh, what are we doing what, for the searching? What, what I mean is, uh, how will you handle uh, the, the exclusivity of that section to avoid uh, to have a lot of, app, uh, of apps there? Uh, okay, so I mean, right now, right, right now, all we have is the micro banner in BlackBerry World. But when we implement those features that I talked about a little bit earlier and that we announced in the keynote, uh, those are going to be based on some sort of algorithm that I, I don't know what it's going to be yet. Um, but we're, we're going to work on that over the next couple of months. So I'm, I'm not sure I can actually answer that question. Okay. Sorry. Thanks. No problem. <clears throat> Anybody else? Does anybody not want to ask Jerome a question? No. He's a smart guy. <laughs> hey, Patrick. Hi. Yes, Patrick. Hi. Um, <laughs> no, it's unfortunately not a question for Jerome. Um, it's one for you. Okay. Um, when the build for BlackBerry was introduced the first time, it was mentioned that at some point it will be a paid program. Yes. So when is that going to happen? And that's my first question. And the second question is, I hope it's going to happen soon because I believe that will um, uh, downsize the queue of applications that are being, um, you know, reviewed and, you know, shorten the time for us to wait to get feedback. Yep. Okay. So answer to question one, which uh, which is is when's it going to? How long is it going to be free? Uh, there are no plans right now to actually make it paid um, uh, in, the, in the immediate future, is what I will say. So it will remain free for a little while. Um, but what we are doing is we're implementing a new submission process, which I don't know if you were in uh, my session yesterday or not. Um, but regardless, I'll tell you about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to move the submission process into BlackBerry, Blackberry Jam Zone. Uh, and what that's going to do is we're going to be able to scan your applications once you submit them, and we're going to be able to tell immediately what type of SDK you're using, um, and we're going to be able to tell what service you're using. So surprisingly enough, a lot of the applications that actually apply today aren't actually eligible. We get a lot of Android applications and a lot of MIPIN applications, so that does tie up some time. You're absolutely correct. So when we do this new submission process, that should help um, that should help bring down the queue times and let our testers focus on actually testing the application. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, this is actually a two-part uh, question, one for you, one for Jerome. Um, would you, since Built for Blackfair will become a paid program, when you do the upgrade, uh, you submit an update for the app, like Leon mentioned. Uh, do you still have? Do you have to pay again, or is it a one time per app? Uh, I'll answer that right now. Actually, uh, I'm not sure how to answer that. I don't know what it's going to be. We're still figuring that out. Okay. Okay. And uh, Jerome, you. I mean, <laughs> uh, we know that you've made black. But I've heard you say that you would not submit Black for built for BlackBerry because you know it would fail. Why? Uh, it would fail based on the UI mainly. I'm doing a few things that are a little different than BB10 UI, and I think they're innovative enough that I don't want to stray away from it. So, in that sense, I wouldn't apply for built for BlackBerry knowing that it's going to be denied. So. Okay. So I mean that's a really good that's a really good question and it's a really good um, example of a really great application on the BlackBerry platform, 
that doesn't want to follow the BlackBerry 10 UI guidelines. And that doesn't mean Jerome can't go out, be completely innovative, make a lot of money, be very well recognized. He has chosen not to be in the program, which is fine. He's in with Trapeze, which I'm happy to have him. Um, you know, so just because you're not in the Built for BlackBerry program doesn't mean that you have a bad app. It just means you've chosen to take a different path. Right? Okay, well, hopefully, uh, no more questions? Okay. Hopefully, I've, I've taught you guys a little bit about, um, about the program and helped clarify some, some questions. And we certainly enjoyed having Jerome here. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks for coming, Jerome. And, uh, yeah, off to the pool. Ooh. All right.